Okay. Hello, and welcome back to Loose Leaf Author Podcast. We've been gone for a while, and I'm super excited to get back and to meet with Maria. She's got a new book that came out this year, and we're going to get to meet her and get some great advice from her. So to introduce her, Maria, how do you say your last name? Marotti. Marotti. Nice. Perfect. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've been taking a, we have a, a is it Italian? Italian. Yes. Oh, I'm from Rome. We have a, um, an Italian exchange student coming this fall. So I've been trying to take a little bit of Italian on this app to good for you. <laughs> I'm horrible at it, but <laughs> very nice. It, that, that, that makes this even more exciting. Well, Maria is an author and retired academic who lives in Santa Barbara, California. She has scholarly publications that include Italian women writers from the Renaissance to the present, the duplicating imagination, Twain and the Twain papers and gendering Italian fiction. And then you also have some fiction, which includes a question of class and many short stories, memoirs of a scoundrel dog, uh, and that's a, that came out in 2017. It's a book of canine humor based on her own life with an entertaining rascal of a dog. <laughs> we've seen, we've seen a couple of those on our podcast. Uh, and of course her newest novel came out in February. Yes. Okay. Yes. Approximately January, January, actually. January. Yeah. And yeah. that's uh, the, the Etruscan princess. Yes. Okay. Well, what else would you like us to know about you personally, Maria? Well, I would just want to add one more thing. Uh, the book is both in uh, um, ebook and paperback. Wonderful. And also, it's coming out very, very soon on the uh, um, audiobook. Oh, we love yeah. audible books. <laughs> Those are wonderful. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, I'll make sure there is a link to not only your website, but also uh, the Etruscan Princess uh, on Annabelle. Uh, see, this is why I edit <laughs> on Amazon in the, yeah. in the show notes. Um, yeah. So I do want to introduce the book a little bit before we get into to questions and, and get you talking. So right. uh, the book is about a vacation in Italy, which mm -hmm. I'm excited about um, with his girlfriend, um, Captain Fusco. Is that mm -hmm. how you say it? So he takes his girlfriend to Italy in the hopes of convincing her to get engaged, I guess is what it sounds like. And they get mixed up in this kidnapping case. So I guess that just kind of brings me into my first question. Where do you come up with your ideas? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <Ask him. laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I think I, uh, this is a sequel of a previous novel. Okay. And so I had already developed the characters. And so I developed them further and they were kind of screaming. <laughs> I want to go on. <laughs> they have a life of their own. And, and they reside somewhere in our minds yeah. or as writers. And they yeah. ask to be put out there and and develop oh, I <laughs> so um I just uh, came up with that and uh yes I, I like Italy I'm from Italy and um I hadn't been there for a while and I, I was just okay okay so what are they gonna do now they are in a relationship because that's how the previous one ends yeah. and um clearly they're different um something some pain is there something is there that is and so I started with their pain and their personal pain. Yeah. And then I, it, it, this, this whole thing happens and they, they could not solve their, their pain in a sense, but, but the getting entangled into this kidnapping thing um, creates a situation by which they have to either solve that problem or not solve it. And in a sense, at first, Fusco sees it like an obstacle. I'm here on vacation. I'm here on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to enjoy Italy and, you know, and convince my girlfriend that, yes, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, and then, you know, this happens and he sees it just as an obstacle to avoid, but, yeah. but he can't. 
<laughs> that's a, the, the whole thing. He can't. He really can't. And yeah. she doesn't want to avoid it either. You know, she really doesn't want to avoid it. She wants yeah. to do something about it. So they are very different. She's a sleuth, you know. Oh, so she does enjoy that. She enjoys that. <laughs> Excites her and worries her too. Um, and that is professional, you know, you follow the rules, you don't do yeah. this this way. No, no, no. And that's <laughs> different and, and, and there is conflict, and, but they love each other, you know, and so it, in a sense that is the best thing ever happened to them, <laughs> this is all trying to solve this case, you know. Oh, that just sounds like so much fun. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. And at the same time, there is Italy and there is the food and there is the art and there is the traveling and the people and funny things. And it, mm -hmm. it, they tell me it's a page turner. So oh, it's not me. It wasn't a page turner for me when I wrote it. But <laughs> it, it, for some people, they write it, apparently. Yeah. So did it feel like you got to go home a little bit when you talked about probably some of your favorite places in Italy? I, I no. when I wrote it, I was going to Italy back and forth in the, so I had the material there, but then um, now lately I haven't been able to go for a number of reasons, including the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> I already had the ticket, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you know, that is, you know, it, it, it was just impossible at the time i hope to go in september yeah well i know my husband and i are hoping to go we um we celebrate 25 years of marriage this year and we have been trying to go to europe forever mm -hmm. but of course as soon as we made plans and bought tickets the pandemic hit and so we couldn't <laughs> go and we're like okay we keep putting this trip off and we're like maybe next year maybe next year and italy is on our list so Italy's there waiting. They'll tell you they're waiting. Yeah, we're like, Please still be there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Okay. So this is a, a, little, a little bit, a little bite of the book, you know, and why read it. Yes. <laughs> it's entertaining, and, but it, it has some depth too. I mean, it's not a superficial entertaining. I want to say that. <laughs> right. Well, I know um, we had mentioned a little bit when we were exchanging emails that you said detective stories are a great way to start a conversation on social issues. So what kind of social issues do you talk about in this particular novel? In this particular novel, I talk about uh, organized crime, which is a problem that Italy has. Uh, this is not to discourage a tourist. It doesn't <laughs> involve the tourists, but it does involve many aspects of life in some parts of Italy. And so that is one thing. I want to talk about uh, th art theft. Oh, nice. um, and that's one of the reasons why I chose the Etruscan princess instead of a Renaissance piece. Yeah. Uh, some people ask me, but why didn't you choose? We have so many. Uh, because you know, to steal those things, you need a lot of organization. And I wanted instead to talk about this uh, petty theft, basically, of uh, these tomb raiders. Oh, lovely. <laughs> uh, yeah, in all around um, the northern part of Rome, you know, right? That's the way the Etruscan area starts. Okay. Yeah, it's a northern, the northern Lazio, which is the region where where Rome is, and then it goes in Tuscany and uh, Romagna. So it's, it's, it goes up north. That's the area where the Etruscans are um, a very ancient civilization, way before the Romans and all that, and, and um, very refined, very refined civilization, great art. Unfortunately, we cannot read what they've written. So that's also, it, it's a mysterious, this kind of mysterious, or oh, it goes well with mystery, right? <laughs> So I decided, um, yes, that's one. And I had some experience of that tomb raiding situation because simply I, many, many years ago in my late husband, we, we had a house um, right on the Bracciano Lake and um, vacation place. And, uh, and uh, uh, so we, we heard a little bit about that, <laughs> that there was this stealing, going into the tombs and it, that's easy to do. You know, it's almost impossible to close all those tombs, you know, so right. it's easy for thieves to go in and steal. So that is another 
problem, local problem, but then it is international problem of art theft. If there were no collectors who are really willing to to buy stolen things and they don't know <laughs> they're stolen. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. So of course not. Right? <laughs> so they get exported everywhere, you know, and yeah. that, who is ever going to find? That's the, the thing. So there is also that sub um, text and also a, a, another uh, other characters emerge. The girl that was kidnapped and, and uh, her connections with her family and disconnection actually and and, and if there is such a word <laughs> so they <laughs> so they that too it has to evolve from anger and hatred and spite into something else so right oh see and i love that you can pull all of that into this fictional world and still be sharing and educating, but do it in a fun fictional way so that people are just enjoying, which is wonderful. Well, I was a teacher for a long time. <laughs> so. yeah. well, well, let's talk about that. You said you were a teacher for a long time. So, so I'm going to guess that writing was not the first thing that you did. How, what did you do before and how did you get into writing? Well, when I was six years old and I learned how to read and write, but by the way, the first book I read was Pinocchio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I found it entertaining, but also very sad. So, um, and, uh, and so I, uh, that was the first thing. And uh, um, one day, a six year old, I told my mother, when I grow up, I want to be a writer. Nice. And I don't know where it came from, but it sounded good to me then. And my yeah. mother said, oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's a good thing to do. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm thankful that she didn't discourage me and say, oh, but who's going to publish your stuff? No, she didn't say anything. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> so Aww. that was good. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, later, as I was a teenager, I started writing poetry. I think many teenagers do. And I did that. Then I started writing short stories. So I, I, that has been part of my life. And then once I, I learned more about literature and got a, a degree, and, and then I went to the States with a scholarship and all that, and, and then eventually got more degrees here because I have a PhD. And, and you know, lovely. I got more interested in 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 the writing process, and uh, but at the time it was more literary criticism because that's went well with my academic career. So that's how I wrote all those books, some with colleagues, some on my own. But it, you know, I followed the the usual pattern. Yeah. Now, my first. Um, book in the series, in the detective series, is actually about the corruption in, in, the, in the academic world, how it's dysfunctional it is. And so, and uh, why use the detective to find out? Because detectives, whether they are going to Italy to <laughs> boot a <the> girlfriend <laughs> or they're, they're going through depression in, in, in California, they get entangled into their, um, you know, the object of their yeah. investigation. And they need to know the, the environment. They need to know everything about it before, uh, you know, that they can do anything, before they find the culprit and they figure out what's really going on, you know? Right. So in order to do that, they need to learn, but they, it, in a sense, they have an innocent outlook because there are no crimes in academia. They are. I mean, <laughs> I never heard <laughs> of stabbing and shooting. It's not like gangs or something like that, you know, so it's very polite. So um, basically, he, he has to learn about it. And now there are other crimes. <laughs> and they make me this one crime that comes up. So that's, and the same is, you know, he needs to be going innocent, innocent look. And then, so the, the learner, you know, the, the new newcomer kind of look, it's important when, you, when you're doing something to have that kind of outlook uh, because the, the reader too may not know. So the reader too is, goes along for the ride. It's nothing is, it's not that they are going to work on, you know, the, the, let's see with this ma mafia crime. No, it's not right. really that, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, you've mentioned that the story um, starts before this book. What's the name of the first book in the series? A Question of Class. Okay, so I was wondering if that was it. The, a Question of Class that came out in 2006. That's the first one. Yes, yes. Wonderful. Back. But I, I'm going to republish it, actually. Yeah. Wonderful. That soon. way, that way, if our listeners want to start at the beginning, they can <laughs> get to know you. Oh, your... back. Yes. And yes. We'll be out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So I love that when you were young, I mean, super early, you decided you were going to write. And I've found that a lot of authors start with poetry, which for me is so hard. <laughs> so I really respect that that's where you started. Um, how long did it take you to write your first full-length novel? You know, it's interesting. I started a few things. When I, le I left academia rather early, I got tired of the games and <laughs> I retired and I specialize in something else. It's an aside. I always had interest in hypnotherapy. I became a hypnotherapist. I'm a Reiki master. I passed life regression, breath work. So I did them all and I had a little practice and, and I enjoyed doing that for many years. I'm not working anymore now. I'm just uh, writing, which is my work. <laughs> yeah. But I, I did that for a number of years. It was great. Great um, be with people, helping people to stop smoking, to, to get out of depression. Yeah, so all yeah. sorts of things like that. Okay, so uh, the question was, <laughs> uh, what, um, how long did it take to write that first novel? The first novel. Well, you know, I, there were many aborting attempts. I, I started and then it didn't go and then, and then something else happened. And the one, then at some point something happened, my mother died and um and it was ill for a few years and i went back and forth from me from here to to italy and this and that and and the grief was intense and i wrote i wrote a novel about that and then i found this is really healing and i had found that through through some short stories but that was so healing to do to just close the door cry, write, cry some more, write. Yeah. I felt I, in a couple of months, only two months, I was done with that and even with the process. I mean, of course, the grief stays for a while, but the intensity, the sting went away. I, I was able to free myself by yeah. writing that. It's not published and it will not be published. It's way too personal. Yeah, even that though was I changed for you. It, the way. it was for me. That was the purpose of the whole thing. I realized, at first I thought maybe I had some agents look at it. Uh, it just, I, I didn't like it. <laughs> you know, I didn't like what they had to say. It, it was not that. It was my catharsis. So it was well worth it. Yeah. Right. I, you said two things in there that I really love. First, you said that there were many aborted attempts that you started something it didn't work. So you let it go. Because I think a lot of times new writers feel like, well, I have to finish it. I started it. I have to do it. But it's okay to let yourself go, you know, to, to admit this is not where I need to be devoting my time. It was a great way to start and practice, but I'm going to move on. So I really, really appreciate that. And then the second was just the whole idea that you took the time to write for you to explore all of your emotions and to get that down. And like you said, to go through that process and be willing to keep that just for you. I don't think we have to publish everything we sit down and write. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh goodness. I, I just, I think that's a great exercise because I think if we can learn to write for ourselves, then when we do write something that we intend to publish, we can find a better balance of writing to audience, but also still being true to what's in our hearts. And uh, I think that's really important to learn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's one thing to say to new writers, you know, yeah. just uh, <clears throat> don't get attached to the result, do it as a practice. And then if you keep on practicing, something will come out that yes. it is there. Yeah. 
Yeah, and to be patient. You take time off. You write a part and then you put it aside and then you go back maybe a year later, yeah. two years later. You know, the interesting thing about the Idraskan Princess, I did that. I wrote a piece. Okay, then I put it aside. Then I went back, wrote another piece. Okay. Then I went on vacation with my husband to a spiritual community in Brazil. And I had plenty of time, you know, you cannot meditate that much. Then at some point you so in that one way I do it's a small village, there's nothing to do. No, there is the book. Okay. So I every time I had time, I wrote it and within two months it was finished. A good chunk of it almost completely finished. So that was great. Um now I had established a, a habit with my husband was that he, he would read my stuff. Okay, it was just something that we did. I would okay, it is a modern one check. So he, that was great. He, he, it was very helpful. Now he passed away suddenly mm -hmm. and uh, nine years ago. And so he never got to, to reading the, the book. And I just, uh, I, I, was, I, I was overwhelmed, obviously. Grief and financial things. I mean, everything changed. Everything was difficult, and so I just decided, okay, that's I'm not. This is not it. Yeah. And years later, years later, I looked at it and I said, "Wow, that's not bad, though, huh?" <laughs> so I sent it to a friend who's an editor. I said, "What do you think of this one?" And he said, "I love it. It's very well put together. Yes, yes, yes." <laughs> so it took me a little bit on time to go into the yes yes and that's where the publishing industry can be a total killer <laughs> because i knew from the first novel that going through the process of sending the book and and in even the, the scoundrel book uh, sending it out sending it to agents they make you wait then after they make you declare that you're not going to show it to anybody else and then you think okay so he's interested well not at all <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they don't tell you okay i'm done go ahead and move on <laughs> yeah move on yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> are you excuse me are you still interested <laughs> oh no 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 okay <laughs> So the, the lack of courtesy, the lack of cooperation. I said, why am I doing this? Right. So, yeah, for the first one, okay, I found it semi-traditional publisher at the time was Publish America, and I got it published that way. Okay. Now, the problem publishing that way is that you really had to work out a lot to sell books. And at the time, it was like yeah. that. Really, you could not. So the, the obstacle of that was discouraging. Yeah. And so first thing I did, I finished, and, and that's also an interesting story about the, the dog book. But, you know, I did that. I published it on my own. I heard about it. People told me, you know, now there is this. There was Create Space, which was all by Amazon. Then they changed to Kindle Direct. Yes. publishing so I said okay you know th there is there is a way out of this even though I may not be able to sell but still there is that and um and so eventually I took the courage and do a, a very good um rewriting and then working on it and, and things came out yes so that's a, and oh. so I, I might think to the new writers is don't worry if uh, you don't get the, the agent. Okay, you can try. Give it a good try. You may be lucky. I don't want to discourage anybody from doing that. But if you don't find the agent, obviously you're not going to publish with a big publisher. Um, okay, there is always a self-publishing thing that you can do. And so it, it's not, you know, the publishing should not stop anybody from writing. I love that. And I don't know that um, new writers sometimes understand how hard it can be. Um, I know my first novel was with a, a smaller traditional publisher and I learned so much from the experience that I would never do it again <laughs> because I, I love having control over all the parts and pieces and being able to look and see, oh, hey, I did this marketing and look, oh, I got some new sales. So that worked. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, you don't have that freedom a lot of times with 
traditional publishers. And as you said, it's a waiting game and they don't always communicate as openly and as quickly as, as you know, we would really like. So I love that. I love that you brought that up. Um, let's see, I'm looking at, at, at my little list here and we're, we're doing good. We're covering lots of great stuff. And I, <laughs> I love it when you just talk, I'm like, I don't want to talk. Um, okay. What is your least favorite part of the writing process? Like recently I talked to a woman who is a ghostwriter and she said she became a ghostwriter because she loves the drafting process, but she doesn't like the author part of the, like the business side. And I realized that I don't like the drafting part, but I love the revision part. So for you, what's your favorite part of it and what's your least favorite part? Um, okay. The writing can be a lot of fun. Yeah. I feel high <laughs> <laughs> when I write and I'm happy. Yes. <laughs> you know, it, I mean, it's the creative process. I'm in touch with a part of me that is not my ordinary consciousness. You know, it's, it's like an extraordinary thing happening, almost spiritual experience. And yeah. being an alternative <laughs> practitioner, I have experience of that, you know. <laughs> be open to whatever, okay? Right. So that part is really nice. Um, there are various things I don't like. One is the writer's blocks, which happen. I had quite a few. Um, life interfering, that's another big writer block. Yeah. You know, um, I've had many, you know, close people around getting sick and needing help and, it's just you know pets get sick and and die I and mean, yeah. all this slows down the process so it's not a, a straight line it goes like this and this it's, yeah. and you have to go for the right accept the fact that it is entangled with your experiences on life now comes the favorite thing <clears throat> it allows you to process to really process your life you become a much better person writing uh, because you have the time not to react, but yeah. to think. So what really happened here? So, you know, and, uh, and uh, the bitterness of having to go through uh, painful losses is not there anymore. It's like, okay, this is very sad and I can use the writing as a cathartic thing but also as a learning experience and uh, a process. It, it turns something that it looks at first sight ugly into something beautiful. Yeah. So this is a, a gift that I've been given and many people are given. You know, we all have a way of processing stuff and the writing is my way of processing stuff, yeah. stuff and, and making it um, acceptable and, and useful for my life or other people's lives. You know, I, I'm interesting. I, I, you know, when they say, who is your avatar? So I thought my avatar were women, right? Yeah. Uh, for, <laughs> women for any age, you know, maybe 15, but you know, in their 20s or 30s, yes. And, and beyond and beyond, very beyond. <laughs> so it, it was just that. And then uh, I thought about doing the audiobook and I have a friend who is an actor, a theater actor. And so I said, by the way, would you read and see if you would like to do the audiobook for me? And he said, yeah, sure. It was just already when he saw the cover, oh, it's a nice cover. I guess it's a romance, isn't it? Well, there is that too. Uh, I don't know. He was so negative, <laughs> unbelievable. So I said, well, clearly this is not. Say, so, you know, this is more for women, maybe, you know, see what you want to do. So he read it and then he called me and said, it's fantastic. I couldn't put it out. That's I wonderful. Said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just for women. <laughs> no, absolutely not. He said, he said, it did me a lot of good because I was going through depression and it snapped me out. I said, great. 
right, this is good. I've heard women telling me that, but then this one, I was like a surprise. Wow, yeah, I wanna do it, I wanna do it. Okay. Yes, yes, oh, that's wonderful. So he's the one now recording it for you. He recorded it, yes. There's some technical snags that need to be um, fixed, but mm -hmm. but it's, it's okay. It's it getting ready. Up. It's getting ready. That is <laughs> exciting, that is so exciting. Um, I'm sitting here taking notes because I love that you said you have to go for the ride when you were talking about writing. And it made me think that you don't have to be a published author to go on that ride and enjoy all the benefits of being a writer, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I it's hope lovely, lovely to publish it and lovely to market it too. It is really, you know, and that's a new thing. Okay. That you say, what are the hurdles well the publication can be it's a tedious work you know really meticulous yes. and, and and yeah and finding okay no this formatting is not quite right and no this <laughs> you know there are lots of technical things i my partner my present partner is very good at that i mean it's really a meticulous person and uh, thank god for that because i'm not <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 look at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. And and I'm and you know, I'm very happy and grateful that, that he's doing that. And and so that's that's one thing to, to be able to what happened here? It's all good? Yeah, no, just I moved. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh that's um that's one thing that, that can be tedious, can be uh, like, oh, the last book I ever write. But it's not true. We all have that kind of thing. Yeah. And, well, uh, you know, like you said, it's how we process things and we have to get back in there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it just becomes part of who we are. Right. Absolutely. And then, you know, I want to thank you and whoever has invited him to podcasts. It's a wonderful way to become public. Yes, it's, it is. You well, know, I, I truly believe we all have a story to share and all of our path to becoming a writer, to becoming published, if that's our goal, it's all different. And I love getting to hear other people's stories. Um, I love having a place where they can share, where you can share your story uh, with others. And, and hopefully that means people come and find you know, come and find your books as well. But if nothing else, I, I, I feel like you are an inspiration because you started a path and, you know, you took whatever side roads you needed to explore and, and kept writing until you reached what it was that you wanted to accomplish. And that's wonderful. So I know we've, we've kind of hit most things, but, you know, is there anything else that you really would like to share with our listeners, whether it be about your writing or about ways that they can continue on their journey or any kind of advice that you would have for them? Just be open, keep writing, persist. Yeah. Um, don't make the publication the goal, but accept the fact. And it, once you're done, once you're done with whatever you can get for yourself and for your friends um, and uh, consider publication in any form. I don't say it has to be self-published or uh, traditional. Just explore the mm -hmm. thing too. And once something doesn't work, just accept it. And there are many paths. You, there are other paths too. And uh, um, traditional uh, publishing is not necessarily the easy. Uh, it can be a problem. Uh, certain parts of it are easier than self-publish. Yeah. But there are many other things that are not easy at all. Just to get there, it can be really difficult. So don't let that discourage you. Just let it go. Now, writing, how do you well look at your life? You know, it's not that it, it has to be autobiographical, but it, it, there are many ways in which your life provides you with the wealth. It's an enormous wealth just to be alive and to be able to look and uh, you know into your life it's it's a it's a fantastic gift that we are given uh, and just to be here to learn and to and to write about it mm. and you know i sometimes found inspiration in things that people don't normally do like animals you know 
I, I'm, I, I heard you before we started and you have dogs. Well, I, I love dogs. Uh, also, I have a, a feral cat now. And my dogs have died, but my oh. feral cat stays and says, okay, I'm here. <laughs> Feed me. <laughs> I'm much more affectionate <laughs> lately, and um, I think he wants more because he's getting older. Yeah. So it's, it's you know, it, he's there and he walks in, meow, and then, it, and then I watch TV and he jumps in my lap. Okay, let's watch TV. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's becoming less and less feral every day. <laughs> every day, a little bit less feral. So I'm writing the, the book that I am now, I'm almost done with it, is called the the saint which was one of the dogs i had it was a total saint and the angel and it's the the other dog i lost in october and a wonderful dog and all the neighbors called her the angel because she was so angelical yeah. and and then and the mean cat and the mean <laughs> cat is there of course <laughs> <laughs> because it's more grounded you know it's more like okay so today the, the saint told me and the saint was also the mother of the, the cat basically i mean she she said okay the voice keep it down <laughs> <laughs> well while we're on it why don't you tell us a little bit about memoirs of a scoundrel dog because i know one of the sure. things yeah, that's you had mentioned available. is that you can use animal narrative to kind of give us mm -hmm. different perspectives so how did you do that you know I just uh, it was quite a, an adventure to have that dog because it was a real rascal <laughs> 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 so my late husband and I went crazy with him because he he just throws bananas okay. <laughs> he, he, I had a constant obsession I have to get out of this joint <laughs> you know yeah. I just have to get out and so he was constantly running away you could never leave the door even ajar. He would say, okay, I'm out. <laughs> then he would come back because, of course, there is no place like home. But yeah. there was this whole thing. Sometimes he would get himself entangled into the, the, the fence. I mean, and he was screaming because, of course, he couldn't then get out or get in. I mean, it was just a mess. It, it, it was all like this. It was an unbelievable, excuse me, an unbelievable thing that he that he had a fixation, and uh, so he did all sorts of things. One day he ran away, and then he managed to get into somebody else's garage. And, <laughs> And I could hear him bark, and I said, "He's inside a garage. Somebody else has got it." And he said, "No, don't you see? It is locked. He doesn't have the key." I said, "I don't know. Maybe he got the key open, and then somehow managed to lock it. I don't know, but that's it." Well, it was him. Okay, and uh, he had entered through a little hole because he was running after the cat. The cat, meanwhile, managed to to leave, and he was with one leg into him a tire and another leg into a washing machine. It was just unbelievable. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's yeah. just fascinating. So it, <laughs> we we're funny things, but they were annoying at the time. Yeah. Some some uh, of my friends who read it and laughed and everything and they said, you know, this is your autobiography <laughs> told by the dog. <laughs> 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 It was a, in a limited way, you know, a, a little bit of a memoir of the of those years of our lives. Yes. With that dog. <laughs> now the interesting spiritual experience I had, and I share it, and some people can say, "Oh, she's bad." Well, that's okay. Uh, is that I I was in, in a group, a channeling group. And I didn't channel, but there was a person who channeled, and he came after he had died through the channel, and I asked the, the channel, so. I'm having a problem here with this book that I wrote about him. Yeah. It needs illustration. And, uh, uh, you know, all my painting friends said, oh, the, I love it, this book. I'm going to paint. Uh, then nothing Never. happened and they couldn't do it. They just couldn't do it. Yeah. And there was people that could really do a fantastic painting job, but they couldn't do it. So I just felt, okay, well, that's the way it is, all right? It, it, is there a problem? I mean, I, does he have any ideas? Does the dog have any ideas? Why is this happening? And so the channel said, yeah, he's really mad at you because he, <laughs> he says, you're the one who has to paint it. Oh. Me? 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a dilettante. I can do a few things, but a whole 20, 30 painting, drawings. No, there's no way. I said, it's a scoundrel even when he's dead. Okay, that's, that's the way it is. Okay, so when Oma was so annoyed. And then I heard me say, wait a minute, wait a minute, something is happening here. So I sat down and I did three drawings. Just like, it was like automatic drawing. Nice. And I kept it up for a whole month. I think that the dog was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, but if it works, right? It worked. It worked. And, I, you know, obviously, someone may say, oh, but it's not. They look at this mistake. doesn't matter. They are like, you know, little things like in the New Yorkers illustrations, you know, that yeah. they're meant to just make you laugh or look at things in a different way. And that's what it was. But anyway, it was an interesting experience, if anything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, by, by a dog. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we always have to try new things. That's that's how we stay alive. That's how we stay young. That's, you know, try new things and we learn new things and it enriches everything about our lives and our writing. So. Yes, absolutely. So the, the title of this one, a Memoirs of a Scoundrel Dog, with illustrations by Maria Marotti, believe it or not. <laughs> and a new one that I'm writing about the mean cat, I, I too, I, I think I'll have to <laughs> try and illustrate. If not, I have friends who are <laughs> better than me. <laughs> but I wanna see if I can do it myself since I did the first one. Oh my goodness. That is just wonderful. I love that you're so willing to try all these things. And, yeah. and I'm so glad that you've been able to be with us. I know we're, we're kind of getting close to the end of our time. So I want to make sure, sure you have a chance to tell everybody where they can find you um, online, social medias, if you have Facebook or, or whatever. And uh, I know you're on Amazon. I will pro provide that link for them. But where else can they find you? Well, Facebook, yes. Um, and also, I have a website, uh, Maria Marotti um, dash author. Um, you can easily find it. You'll see my books and uh, some blogging that I've done. I, I'm, I haven't done it recently, but I'll go back pretty soon. And I will talk about this experience too, being interviewed. <laughs> I think it's yes. going to be one yes. way of communicating because it, then it goes to Facebook right away. Yeah. That actually reminds me when I was looking at your um, website, I know I'm going to like, uh, you know, let me know if you, if you're like, I have to get on with my life because I, I could talk for a long time, but um, your last blog post, you know, it used, as you said, it had been a while, but you were talking about um, going to a marketing school for self-published authors. And I was mm -hmm. curious about that, like how you found it and, um, you know, what was that all about? Because I love sharing resources with our listeners. Absolutely. Yes, it's a big marketing school. It's called uh, Self-Publishing School. And uh, I don't even remember how I ran into it, <laughs> definitely <laughs> on the internet. And um, okay, so I went in there and I think they invited me to participate to the annual meeting nice. for very little money. It was just very, very economical. And I did, and I liked it a lot. I liked the youthful energy of the people. They're all young, <laughs> and but, but um, very, positive very yeah and in the in the people uh, who were writing and connected with that were of uh, you know any age from young to to old very old you know so that that was encouraging to me to see this variety and uh, the different classes that they offered um very nice so i i signed up and uh, i learned a lot about publishing and where to find resources, um, where to find the, the podcasts eventually. So, well, this, is, this is this guy at Fiverr that does a fantastic job. And he does yes. for very little money. He 
presented me with tons of podcasts. So that wow. is a fantastic resource. That's how I find you. <laughs> oh, well, that's wonderful. I didn't even know somebody knew <laughs> about me. So. <laughs> you do it. Yeah. And, and so the, uh, it, there are many things like that that they provide you with. And, uh, and there is just the camaraderie and, and the, you know, the being with other writers and, uh, and, and also you know, becoming more discriminating. Okay, I like that class, it's helping me and this other one, not really. I mean, you just, yeah. you just move around and it's, it's, it's a good experience. Yeah, so self so publishing school, um, it's, it's a good thing to have, good resource once you are already, or if you even just starting because they also have writing classes. I, I didn't take those, but they have that too. Yeah, and uh, I know some people, love them you know so yeah well that's that's the one thing I've really missed with um, the pandemic is being able to go to writers conferences because you like like you said I think it's such a unique com uh, community like we don't think of each other as we're in competition it's it's very much a you know oh you're 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 like me. We have these things going on in our head that makes it so that maybe sometimes we're awkward when we talk to real people because we're like, oh, wait, <laughs> you know, and, and it's just that sense of community that that you're all in it together. I love that. <laughs> and don't you find that when you're talking to real people, all of a sudden something clicks, oh, this conversation is going to go into a book. <laughs> yes, all the time. And I'm like, would it be rude to pull out my notes and write something down and <laughs> all the time. It's a technique that, yeah, very successful, like Grace Bailey, you know, she she talked about that, you know, just go around in the bus with a little thing on. And, <laughs> and their dialogues are incredible because of that, because you, they're real, they're from real life, you know, that's yes. that's how it is. Yep. Yeah. This ability to, to just... Uh, yeah. I, create an ear for this kind of dialogues it, it, yes and uh situations is I mean, this is gonna be real well it's very real for me <laughs> <laughs> well and, and i've just discovered you can't make some of this stuff up but real life is no, you can't. crazy <laughs> wonderfully yes, wonderfully it, crazy <laughs> it, it's crazy and you know it's, it's great to, yes. to have that to have the openness to that and uh, yeah okay. i don't well, know what else <laughs> that's that's yeah. pretty much all i had and i i just have i really really enjoyed getting to talk to you and i'm excited about your book the etruscan princess you know it sounds like it's this kind of great mix of suspense and travel and romance and this you know look into you know, the Italian mafia and the art theft and all these things. Um, it just sounds like it's got a little bit of everything for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited. I, I hope that does well for you. And I'm so glad that you were able to join me today and kind of kick off our reboot for our podcast. We've, you know, taken a break and I'm ready to get back in there because I love talking to people like you who are out there and doing it. So thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I'm great, very grateful. <laughs> Delightful. To you. Oh, easy. Well, thank you. Well, we like to end by, um, we have a little saying we like to end with, and it goes, keep writing or start writing. That's right. Keep writing or start writing. <laughs>